Hi, I'm Amy Servini. I'm Hilary Gardner. And I'm Melissa Stilianu. And, and we, we are Duchess. Duchess. When we started singing together, we discovered that humor, collaboration, and yes, imperfection were essential ingredients for our signature style of harmony. We're setting out to explore what harmony means to creative people from all walks of life and to learn how they find joy and success in their chosen field. Along the way, there's sure to be laughter, storytelling, and probably hijinks. That's just who we are. Well, hello. Melissa, you're making a funny face. I am making a funny face. Why are you making funny faces? Because it makes my voice sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> Trying some different stuff. You do you, you try some stuff out there, Celiano. <laughs> I will welcome our audience. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Harmony and Hijinks with Duchess. In some of our questionnaires that we've done with people, maybe it was the ones on stage, we talked about summer jobs. And I'm curious, mm. have you done any weird summer jobs? Or maybe not even weird. What was your favorite or weirdest? Uh, I think that the, my summer job in the nineties and the mid nineties was both the weirdest and my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a whole lot of sense to yeah. me. Doesn't it? <laughs> so I was, I was, I was in high school still. I was in between my, in between grade 12 and, and OAC year, grade, th- or grade my fifth 13. year. Had Ontario five had years five years school. for a while. Canadians, I don't know how they do these things, <laughs> I know. but it's, know. it's like effectively before your senior year, right? Translating for the Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Except extra year. Like we went to school, high school for five years. Right. It would be like if if eighth grade was your first year of high school, kind of. No. Except I would have been you older. Also did eighth grade. Like oh. we were all. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, oof. So it's how old are you I, when you graduate high school in Canada? Uh, well, because nineteen. Yeah. I well, 18, I was eighteen 18, because 18, we're 19, September yeah. babies. Or wow. Yeah. September and October, respectively. So. Um, in any case, I was into theater and I was, you know, in shows and stuff. So I went to Canada's Wonderland, which is, I I think it had just changed hands and was now Paramount Canada's Wonderland. Mm. And I auditioned to be in one of their many shows that they had. And, um, I think I did a dance portion and stuff, but they called me back for, for like just acting. And I ended up, um, making it into the troupe that became the, um, the Star Trek walkabout actors. (laughs) For that yes. summer, ninety four, and uh, or was it? Yeah, it was ninety four. So I was the youngest. Um, every I think there were like twelve of us. So there were a couple of Romulans, a couple of Klingons, some Bajorans, and I think that was, oh, Vulcans. Vulcans, of course. Naturally, the next year they they added some Cardassians. I think I don't know. No, that, that happened. No. That happened. <laughs> Cardassians. <later. laughs> they hadn't been born yet. No, <laughs> no. Exactly. well, oh, I don't know about that. Is that true? It's possible. Oh. Some of them certainly. I don't know enough about them. So it was it was a really important time for me because I was you know I was this the baby of this acting troupe and we did like two and a half weeks of rehearsals and it was mostly rehearsals. did you have to like yeah. be in character the whole time you were like walking around the park? Yes, amazing. So some kid yes. just like saw you drinking a soda. You had to be like, "Hello, cyborg!" I like what do they <laughs> say on Star Trek? <laughs> well, my thing was that because uh, I was a Bajoran. Um, so I think I forgot to mention the Bajorans today. I? Well, I don't you know what they, you mentioned that they existed, laugh. but I yeah. didn't know that that's what you um, were. I, um, I, first of all, I was not a huge Star Trek fan before getting this job. So I did a little bit of, of research, but it, back in those days, like I didn't have a computer or anything. So mm-hmm. cause I watched a couple of shows, um, and, and talk to my friends. There were a couple of people on in the cast who knew a lot about Star Trek. So that was helpful, but I had to be kind of on the sly cause I didn't want everyone to know that I was kind of. Uh, you know, imposter. a dimwit. Yes, a bit of an imposter. <laughs> like, I've never seen this <laughs> show oh my in my gosh. life. What? But I gleaned from watching a couple of episodes of the show that that the Bajorans on the show tended to to have kind of a tough exterior, um, a very tough species and uh, humanoid, and they they had the little the ridges on their nose, oh, and they'd right. been oppressed by the Cardassians for a century or two, and um, really, you know, kind of had a, maybe a bit of a chip on their shoulder. That was what I what I absorbed. So I decided that my character, Lieutenant Locke Minera, would be... Did they um, assign that name, or did you choose I it? I created my own character and name. Um, I think I was looking through the business section of, of, of like, with the Globe and Mail or something at home when I came up with the name, like, from the stock exchange or something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wanted something, like, hard. So Mi- Locke Minera. So Locke would have been my last name, but... Would they they flip them on Bajor? Um, I decided that wow. I, I'd be a bit of a you know kind of a hard ass. So, if a human at 
the park had come up to me while I was sipping a beverage, I would have basically told them to F off. Um, and that was my approach. And I found it really hard to drop that character because I was a brand new actor and I didn't know about creating a character you and went leaving method. it at home. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa like, just went just fully method for so her job at Canada I went, Wonderland. I went home to the suburbs of, of Scarborough um, in my car, which I owned. I had a car that was given to me. Wow. Yeah. So I drove to the park every day and uh, I went home and I would just be an asshole to my family. <laughs> And I, was like, I have a little brother. He's, you know, six feet tall now, but he was, he was a small guy then. And he would get under my skin and I'd say, back off, human. And <laughs> my dad pulled me aside and was like, look, <laughs> this, you have to just chill out. Because I was a really <laughs> sweet kid. And I just turned that summer into, into something else. Um, a Bajoran. Wow. A Bajoran, yeah. A Bajoran, you know, they're not all like that, I think, but... But I had decided that mine Amazing. would be. So it was a great job. I had a lot of fun. Everyone else in the cast was older than me and had done something like Second City. Like they were all like seasoned improvisers. And that's what we did. We would go out in the park and we had to learn all these scripts for these sketches. And whoever came up to you, you know, had the chance to, to start one of those sketches. Yes, and. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of yes, and. And involving like the people at the park. And it, it was really a lot of fun. So, wow. and I, I have a little bit of photographic evidence of my, of me and my Bajoran cat suit, <laughs> my Starfleet uniform. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. What about yours? My summer job was nowhere near that, that interesting or fun. I, the, the job that I had in between my senior year of high school and freshman year of, of college, well, yeah, I had it for a couple of summers. I had come back from my foreign exchange actually. So it was year after high school before I went to college, solidly like mid to late nineties. I worked in a hotel for a cruise company <laughs> and, um, it was, yeah, I worked for princess tours and cruises and what they do, it's this really fascinating business strategy. They take a bunch of teenage girls with no real power or confidence and they put them at a desk so that deranged, angry tourists who are missing bags or don't have the hotel room that they wanted can come up and yell at them. And the girls don't have the presence or self-possession to say, hi, I don't know who you think you are or who you think you're talking to, but you can back up right now or I'm not helping you at all. That's what I would say inside of five minutes if I had that job today. <laughs> at 17, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, I remember, <laughs> I remember a completely just a, a livid woman who was 70 if she was a day who came up to the desk and she said, all of my friends are on the 14th floor. We are on the 15th floor. What are we supposed to do? <laughs> and I was like, take the elevator. Like I didn't understand. <laughs> I did not understand the job, but it was not a great scene for me. I mean, customer service, as you may gather, which ironically is how I've spent most of my adult professional life outside of music. It's, it's not really my milieu. Um, <laughs> I, I've told you guys this story before, but one of the things that we did is all these people would take the train from Denali national park. They, they take the train and then they'd arrive in Anchorage, which is where I worked. And then they'd go from Anchorage either on a plane back home, or then they would take a bus ride to their cruise ship and take a cruise down. Cause I mean, Alaska is this vast, vast state. So it's a long trip when you do this. So part of my job was to meet these people coming from the train and I'd get on the bus. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> motor coach is the <laughs> official term. And I'd get on the motor coach and give them their whole little spiel about like, if you're going on a plane home, this is when you have to have your bags in front of your door and we'll come by and collect the bags and yada, 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 yada. And people, were always annoyed. And I remember at one point, you know, somebody just like started yelling at me on this bus about why do we have to have our bags out so early? And that's, that's too early. It's too early to go to the airport and you have to do something about this. And I had just had it. And this, this was the moment that I broke. And I said into the handheld microphone at the front of this bus overloaded with livid senior citizens, I said, sir, I'm wearing a name tag and a bow tie. How much do you think I can really affect this situation? And, and as, as, <laughs> Uh, a silence fell over the bus and we went back to the hotel and I, I recall getting a little bit of a sit down after that one. Did you do it for just for one summer? No, I did it for several summers. Mm. And I guess I wasn't as horrible as I thought because like the third summer they promoted me. <laughs> but <laughs> it was kind of the same vibe. Like 
not really much real power. I got to wear my own clothes and carry a walkie talkie. But I mean, I remember distinctly as in my management role, I remember like coming to try to help with the situation. And this woman just looked over at me and she just goes, how old are you? Like just, and, and in hindsight, you know, at the time I was just enraged I thought it was just the biggest insult and now I'm like god I totally sympathize with right. this woman like something had gone terribly wrong <laughs> and they sent like 19 year old Susie cream cheese to like try to help her out so I don't I don't blame her for that frustration but so then that was the last year that I did it I also had a cruise ship that's job. right and it was it was princess for one of the summers and it was also in Alaska, in Alaska. right yeah, yeah. whoa oh. I know. So I did two summers <laughs> on the cruise ships. Uh, I had a connection. I knew someone on the inside. So <laughs> <laughs> it was prison. It was. <laughs> um, so usually cruise ship runs. I don't know if either of you ever explored this option in your musical careers. Um, but usually it's it's a minimum of three months contract. Wow, maybe six months Yikes. maybe even. That's long. It's very long. But because I knew someone, I was allowed to do a shorter run. So I just did the summer basically. Oh. It was between uh, freshman. I did it two years. So between, I don't even know the names, freshman and sophomore and sophomore and junior. Mm-hmm. Are those the right of names? Of college. Yes. Um, I still, I, I called it first year and second year, even when I was there. Like I still talk about Celsius. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I played saxophone in the band and clarinet and flute. And the first summer I went to um, Bermuda, Ooh. from Bermuda to New York, back and forth, six or seven or eight times or wow. something. Um, I watched The Wedding Singer about a million times in my room because <laughs> they have only certain channels and it's the same movies because it's Amazing. different passengers, so they don't change the movies. But the schleps who are on there the whole summer just have <laughs> basically the one option. You're like, oh, good, Here Adam Sandler. <laughs> um, and, and I was the only girl in the band, which frankly, I'm very used to. But when it's a situation like a cruise ship, they have an issue with you when you're a girl in the band because they don't have a room for you because you have to share Mm. bunks, right? So on this first ship, I was the person I knew was the band leader who gets his own room. So he gave me his room, sweet, sweet Michael Arthurs, thank you very much, um, for the whole time I was on. So I got had my own room. I was so young. I mean, I, I guess there were other young people there. Not in the band, certainly. It was all, they were much Seasoned older. alcoholics. Well, <laughs> that was that Alaska cruise had more oh, yeah. of those. Well, that's, that, that's not a surprise. <laughs> um, but man, it was so, it, it was an awesome summer job. I mean, I had all these grand plans of practicing every, don't have to practice ever. I mean, I got to play every day, which right. was great. And more than that, I used to, and I really liked it. Like I would, I, so you have to wear a uniform. And I think maybe even you could be in the common areas, but you had to wear your uniform. So, but I would go up for like when, when everyone, when you're like welcoming people on the first day and mm-hmm. everyone's doing the dances and the stuff, I would go up and dance. Dances. And yeah, like, you know, you to like warm people up as like you're Like they're probably playing York. Jimmy Buffett or something. No, the Macarena and you're oh, doing like I do all like these Macarena. different, like I learned the electric slide. That's where I, I still cannot understand the electric slide because it's not it's in like a weird meter the (laughs) dance doesn't match the meter of the song anyway that's another story um but i would like i got really into it and i loved i loved 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 doing that one so i did i did it again the next summer and i the first cruise was celebrity the second cruise was uh princess and this was the vancouver alaska Mm. one and so same problem no bunk so i my roommate was the lead singer from the country band. Yes. Who is from the Philippines and could hardly speak English. But she's but like she singing Tanya Tucker songs all about. <laughs> and I was like, what? I went to see her Stand one night. By a man. Seriously, Tammy Wynette, like yeah. you. Amazing. All of them, all of that whole band, you would talk to them, maybe like they would just smile and nod a lot. And I was like, oh, okay, we're going to do this whole summer like this. This is awesome. <laughs> And then I went to see her sing, and I was like, "What? Well, let's just talk in country metaphors. Like, we can just, <laughs> <laughs> what? I You're like, hey, good looking, of- what you got cooking? <laughs> it was awesome. She'd get the wrong idea. It was so good. <laughs> um, that was less fun of a cru- like, I mean, it's not the beach. It's Alaska. So you can tell me about it. <laughs> the, the, I think that's actually the title of my the, memoirs. <laughs> it's 
It's not the beach. <laughs> it's Alaska. It's a la- <laughs> mar, mar, mar. Yeah. The band was was significantly older. All the crew was like older, much older than me. Um, so there was less of a party kind of vibe. There what there were the very sad, sad people who owed money at the end of the week because they had had so much to drink. Mm. Like I would go get my checks, and you'd always see some like you know. Like second trumpet player, yeah. <laughs> like paying, oh. paying the bank oh, because he brutal. drank his whole paycheck, um, and then some. Yeah, it was pretty bad. Um, and there, they definitely didn't have a uniform for me, so I have pictures, of course. Um, at least on the on the celebrity cruise, they had you know the other everyone wore the same uniform, so they had a precedent and they just gave me, they had skirts, they had these pencil skirts so that the entertainment crew wore. So I got to wear one of those, but on, on the princess cruise, they were like, yeah, we just don't have anything. <laughs> and I was like, that's fantastic news. What would you like me to do? And they're like white pants, like the rest of the band. And I was like, no, Oh my God. I had to wear white pants for my princess job. Yeah. With a blue blazer. My blazer like was that, like, like humongous. Royal, Royal blue. I no blazer, like oh. sweater, vest oh. kind of, but like, but was that blue, like I like blue, <laughs> But this blue was just wrong. Yeah, it's it it probably polyester stuff too. Oh, I mean, just so bad, much polyester. Bad. But hey, listen, for a summer job, six weeks, eight weeks, I got to see Alaska, I mean, a million times. Got a little, you know, you've seen one like iceberg, iceberg crack and fall into Glaciers. the... Glaciers. I have, <laughs> I have all these pictures. I've just been actually recently going through my pictures and throwing out stupid pictures that you take when you're 20. And I have about a million pictures that all you can see is like the ocean and a little bit of like some landscape. And then you look really closely and there's this like little gray dot. It's just whales. Like I uh-huh. just took a million and a oh. half pictures of like the tiny little like tails yeah, yeah. of whales. But I have so many like week after week. I but would to just be take fair s- for all you all pictures. you kids listening, um, you know, this wasn't a, we weren't using digital cameras. You didn't know what you were going to get. That's true. You took <laughs> all right. those pictures in hopes and then you, you would take them and drop them off and pay a million dollars and hope when you went through <laughs> the tiny, them. Tiny the, whale the, tails. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that you hadn't opened the case too early. Exactly. And the whole thing like, oh, yeah. re- you remember to rewind your oh, film. Oh my gosh! Totally yes. True. Yeah. Totally a different, a different experience. Yeah. Okay, you guys, speed round. Okay. All right. Some favorite nineteen nineties songs. Oh. Oh. I. But I'm in, stuck in the wrong place. I think everything's the not the eighties. Okay, Hillary, start. Oh, me and my big mouth. Well, I just love like all of the new Jack swing and like hip hop stuff. So like Tony, 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 any and all and Vogue SWV. I loved, um, Biggie, the, any of the, like the bad boy era of hip hop <laughs> is like my jam. Oh, I'm still trying to think of what. Oh so, my God. I loved the Batman forever soundtrack or some things from it. Like I saw that, that movie well, right after I think high I like school. That, too. that was like more alternative. There was like sunny day real estate and different, like there, that was not as much hip hop. Although Brandy does a very good song on there. Oh, maybe I don't know this one. Maybe I know an eighties Batman soundtrack. <laughs> The one with all the prints. Yes, all them, yeah. that's totally what I'm Erotic thinking of. Erotic City, come on. It's so good. <laughs> it is so good. Um, I was that into... That might be 90s, though, actually. Is it? I think so. I don't think that's 80s. I think that is 90s. Maybe. Um, I love Depeche Mode. Yes. Loved, loved, loved Depeche Mode. Um, I really... I, I, I had a big Canadian thing happening for a while. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies. Mm-hmm. When they, like, I had their first cassette. Yes. That came out. Like, oh, they're like nice. EP or something, six tunes. Amazing. Moxie Fruvis. I went through a big a big phase of all that kind of stuff, especially when I was doing like vocal. Jamiroquai. Vocal oh, jazz. I love oh, Jamiroquai. I love Jamiroquai too. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, 90s, 90s. I went to jazz school, like mid, you know, 96. So then everything became. I mean, listen, I was listening to What a Man. And yeah. I was the only, you know, person on my floor. I went to a conservatory. So yeah. it wasn't only jazz. It, there weren't actually that many women or mm. young women in the jazz program. So it was a lot of classical. They did not share my musical taste. 
sadly. At that mm. time in my life, like I was listening and singing along to a ton of like jazz in my room and I was studying class and all that stuff. But I also, and I don't know how I managed this, I knew every song on the radio and yeah. every artist. Like yeah. I was really into like, top 40. And I, I mean, sure, it's not because I've gotten older. Music was just better then, right? <laughs> 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 it's not that I'm older. It's that it's just music has just gotten worse. You know? <laughs> I, I, feel, I, was, uh, I have like a bit of a gap in my pop music knowledge. Um, when I got into high school, I fell in with this group of nerds um, that was that were really big uh, Mel Gibson and Brian Adams fans. So we Mel had Gibson, Mel, the, actor? the actor? Yeah. That's right. Um, so <laughs> in order to gain entrance into the club, you had to name like five Mel Gibson movies. And, uh, and I think I just squeaked in under the wire. Um, I don't think I could do that now. I don't know. Mad Max, I think maybe there were one or two of those. So I think I might have got in with, with right. a couple of those. But uh, I, I definitely faked my way into, into that group of friends. Uh, I mean, we were friends, but I didn't really know much about Brian Adams or Mel Gibson. <laughs> And so my first Everything big, oh my gosh, yeah. I, love, I was going to say the Robin Hood soundtrack. Oh. Um, so I went to, my first big concert was a Brian Adams concert and we all got dressed up. We were all wearing flannel and like yeah. leather necklaces, white yeah. t-shirts and jeans. I had to borrow some of this stuff because I didn't have it. Um, but you know, I got dolled up. We all went to one person's house and got ready for the concert and I get there and I knew like two or three songs. I was really kind of a little nervous because everybody knew everything it mm-hmm. seemed to me and we get there and I, you know, I don't know, I wasn't holding a lighter, but it was that vibe. Everybody in the arena, this is in London, Ontario was singing along and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be in trouble. And then the concert started and I found myself singing along with all these songs that I didn't know at all. And I thought I was a genius. <laughs> well, you were right. <laughs> I think I was kind of right. You no, know, my, my powers of prediction, I think. And, oh. uh, and Brian Adams, like, you know, rhyme structure was sort of oh. like worked in my favor, but <laughs> it was, it was really good. And so I was kind of by default, a Brian Adams fan. And, and you know, I still think some of those, those songs are, are really cool to rock out to. Mm-hmm. But, um, but I was, yeah, I was listening to like show tunes a lot. And then by the time I got into the mid nineties and I was in theater school, I was listening to what my friends were listening to. They were trying to like, I was kind of the baby of the group again, and they were sort of trying to educate me. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it was, so I ended up listening to a lot of, we went to a lot of like eighties dance parties mm, for oh. some radi- reason. And I um, did that too. Yeah. I was listening to college. like a lot of Radiohead and Bjork and PJ oh, Harvey had one of the best stuff. So, too. yeah. So, I, Fiona that, that actually, Apple. Yeah. yeah so, I forget, like, Bjork. I think my time is just like a little confused. It I think of the 90s as high school, but it was really actually all of college, too. I only you went know. to college for two years, so it was definitely all of college for me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was really into Sting, Alanis Morissette, and Alanis. you guys, Jagged oh, yeah. Little Pill. Yeah. That record is yeah. so good. A friend of mine dated her. Stands. Really? Yeah, or an acquaintance. He was actually, mm. he was a Vulcan. Um. <laughs> Alanis, if you're listening, <laughs> sorry to put you on blast for having dated a Vulcan. It was before he was a Vulcan. But um, <laughs> yeah, they, they went on a date. He told me they went for falafel, I think. Mm. As I think one she does. Was, she was very nice, apparently. I don't know. <laughs> Good times, the '90s, Good time. and a lot of them. A, like that. That's that's a lot. That covers like all, pretty much all of high school for us, and all of our Beyond. college yeah. or university education. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Harmony and Hijinks. You can buy Laughing at Life wherever music is sold, and through our website, DuchessTrio.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Duchess Trio. And please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcatcher. See you next time on Harmony and Hijinks.